Yes, my straight talk family. When you hear that theme song, you know it's time for another edition of Straight Talk, and time for me to bid St. Kitts and Nevis good night, and bid the entire Caribbean good night, or I should say, extend greetings to the entire world because we are on the world wide web, and I. Reach and communi- 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 communicate. What's wrong with me here tonight? Communicate with you uh, all over the world, especially those in the Ketishan and the Vision diaspora. There are some of you who are in Africa, there are some of you who are in Asia, there are some of you who are in Europe. And there are a whole lot of you all over North America. So I'm at liberty to say good night. I will say good morning. And I can say good afternoon as well. Because one of such greetings will be applicable to the region in which you now find yourselves. And for the first times in pa- first timers in particular... I extend a very, very warm welcome to you, wherever you are. And just to inform you that Straight Talk is a public service program that facilitates and promotes free expression on all issues of national interest, be they legal, be they environmental, be they technological, social, economic, and or political issues on Straight Talk, you do have a forum to express yourself freely. And we live in hope that one day we will get back to that enviable position of being one of the freest countries in the entire world. But with what's going on in our country, I can tell you that will be a Himalayan task Very arduous one as well. But let's keep trying, my straight dog family. I implore you to keep trying. And on this program, we try to raise the level of national consciousness. We try to raise the level of national discourse by alerting our people to their rights, to their responsibilities, and certainly... To their obligation. My name is Ian Patches Lybird, and I give um, Almighty God thanks for blessing me with yet another opportunity to join you in conversation, my straight dog family, on yet another occasion. And I want to also inform the first timers that on this program we also include your calls, we also include your emails because we are what I deem a participative program. So we give you access to the program via our telephone numbers that are displayed on your screens. 646-829-6672. That is the overseas line and the local line is 663-6672. Of course, you can access this Access it uh, from any part of the world. Of course, you must use the area code, which is 869. And for those who like the cloak of anonymity, I call it, we give you access via our email platform, which is uh, uh, displayed as well on your screen, the straight talk patches, that's one word, at gmail.com. And I say a special welcome. I always say a special welcome to my young brigade. I know vacation time is, I believe, is just about up. And school gets back in session on Monday for those of 
us in the Caribbean region and in particular in St. Kitts. Uh, so I know young Dwayne, I don't think you're going to school uh, 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 primary or elementary as yet. Tristan, I trust you reminded your mom that tonight is Thursday night. And you know, we come your way every Monday and Thursday night. Shema, Kevin, over there in Nevis, Shema in uh, uh, Frigate Bay, yes, my dear young, young brother, young uh, dear son, Shema, I can say, and young Rucosta, family over there in South Carolina, Travis and Travon, I trust you had a wonderful Easter break, and you will be uh, going back fresh to school on Monday. All of you, as a matter of fact, I should say that. And the special lady passed through uh, on a fleeting visit, but she'll be here in on, on, on Street Talk, and we'll have a discussion very, very shortly. I'll tell you, I'll give you that information in advance. I want, as a public service announcement, first of all, to ask you to put into your diary uh, a date when the Mother's Day, uh, when the Mother's Day, my straight dog family, uh, appreciation dinner uh, hosted by the National Women's Arm of the PLP. And that would take place uh, coming up. Try to get the date here for you, my sweet dog family. It's script listed on your screen there. Uh, it's coming up shortly. And tickets are available as per the numbers displayed there, uh, my sweet dog family. So keep that in mind, uh, that upcoming event uh, for Mother's Day. I wanted to speak on a maritime matter as well, but I think I will defer it since I don't have uh, all the information to display on the screens. But I, I noticed something happened the other day, but as we move into our observations in review, I should have uh, forewarned you that our observations in review are an integral part of straight talk. And after which we normally move into a thesis or a short dissertation. And my thesis or short dissertation tonight I have titled Doom and Gloom in St. Kitts Nevis Convict as Selling Passports. And we'll get into the details uh, shortly. But as I was about to say that our observations in review are an integral part of our program. It's a, a, a time when we highlight the current issues and do some reflection on issues that are usually current, and those are past as well, because if we don't get answers, we tend to review them uh, like, for example, our water or the water in Kian. We're happy that water is found, but we're still wary. We're cautious that the authorities are not being transparent with the people, not being transparent with us. And that's not a good sign. It, 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 it's bothersome. But we look at what has changed as well and what, has helped others and what can be expected next and what we have learned as a people, my straight dog family, and how it has helped us. Our first observation we just need to, as a matter of information as well, that our Prime Minister, Dr. July, is presently on his honeymoon, I call it, in Dubai. Uh, having left the Federation under the pretext of advancing the funding of geothermal in Nevis. Very strange, he'd want to go on his own when he took 
as someone from Nevis uh, on his first announced trip trip to the UAE, and I think, or rather, it was to Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> but he sent, I think, the slow student went to Saudi Arabia. I saw something uh, being signed in relation to 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 dual operated generators. Uh, you, you tend to get these mixed signals uh, in terms of of our energy policy. Where are we going in the context of climate change and uh, in the context of renewable energy? Because if you are going renewable, why are you investing in fossil fuel generators? And it's, it's confusing, my straight talk family. But there's some other issues I want to address, and I would defer them tonight. And one of the main issues is our, our maritime delimitation. I saw something in the news the other day, and I, I am a bit concerned that the fisher folk in this country were not uh, informed, were not uh, consulted uh, in terms of what I saw on the social media in terms of our signing um, maritime delimitation boundaries. But I'll get all the information for you so that I don't leave you hanging. You know, I always like to provide the evidence. Another observation we will consider tonight, though, is the it relates to the chair or chairperson or chairman of the Board of Governors of the our CBI program, the Citizenship by Investment program. We must recall that when the administration changed, uh, the current administration established a board of governors uh, for the CBI. But we saw as well in the news that the chairman of the board of governors uh, Sylvester Anthony, he failed to declare his assets and liabilities in accordance, I think, is with Section 50. I stand to be corrected. I think it's in accordance with Section 50 uh, C of the Integrity in Public Life Act. And the chair of the Board of Governors and, uh, of the CBI plays an integral part but in the passport trade, and he must know that, he determines the final approvals of projects and certificates of registration that are sent to Prime Minister July for his signature. And this trade in our passports generates billions in revenue or has generated billions in revenue over the last uh, number of years, decades, I should say. But we were ad informed that the DPP, Ali Smith, who has gone very quiet, you observe, in recent times, and we heard an issue as it relates to the mayor sizes, I think, uh, in Nevis. I'm not mixing the issues here, but uh, just since it came to mind that there won't be any cases advanced in the mayor sizes. Uh, that's something unusual. But getting back to the chairman of the board of governors, we understand and we that he did not file his assets and liabilities, and therefore was taken to court by our. Very efficient DPP, Adley Smith. And you see the court case, the trial uh, came up on the 26th of February. And the case number is also listed, uh, the DPP versus Sylvester Anthony, who, like I said, is in fact the chair person of the CBI, if that still is so. But we realize that the uh, we recognize that the information on, 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 on this case has just gone quiet. We have been hearing that the chairman of 
the Board of Governors, Sylvester Anthony, has since resigned. Straight Talk cannot confirm it. I repeat that. Straight Talk cannot confirm that. But we understand that he has since resigned. Well, we don't know what a resignation or how any resignation could or should impact uh, that case because the law is the law. But we are closely monitoring this story and we'll keep you abreast of what's happening in my straight talk family. In relation to the, the solar farm, which was held up for all these years, for nine, two years since the, this new administration came into office, that solar farm has not moved just because it's a team unity project. And this is what's, hap- what's happening with this administration, why we are facing doom and gloom in this country. And that's very uh, a se- severe criticism, but I'll get into it uh, fully in my straight dog family as it relates to, to where we are heading in this country. Because as I said before, I said uh, on the last program, I think it was, that the advisor, the advisor to the Prime Minister, Austin Edinburgh, I don't know if we are still friends, I call him my friend nonetheless, but I call him as well Appleton. But he told the country this about the Le Clanche Solar Farm Project. And I want you to hear it yourselves one more time. It is a good project based on our own studies, calling in the expertise from right in the Caribbean to assess. It's a good project. Mm-hmm. The feel that it was properly assessed and the, and the costing was um was within the range of what it would cost anywhere to do that so yes the special advisor to drew july said it's a good project so isn't it really sad that you'll have a very important project a good project like the solar farm project which would eventually generate 36 megawatts of base load at peak time or peak periods for Skellig. And that could have already reduced our costs for electricity or even the costs uh, for, 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 for uh, Skellig, my street dog family. But that's how this administration operates. They politicize everything and do not subscribe, obviously, to the concept of government being continuous. But those are my observations in review for tonight, my street dog family. And I now move right into my thesis for tonight, which I just said, and for those who may have just joined me, I have titled Doom and Gloom in St. Kisnevis. Convict selling passports. And my street dog family, in recent times, we hear of our prime minister's idle boasts about being number one in CARICOM on the Human Development Index. Sure, you would have heard that yourselves. In the event you have not heard it, we always bring you the information up to date. And he said this about the Human Development Index. And he mentioned my street dog family trying to find that that uh, video clip for you while I speak. 
And he gave reasons and tried to claim credit for that that performance or the performance of St. Kitts and Nevis, but he always does that. And he said this, my straight talk family. Rather, and if you see the number of things that we have done to put St. Kitts and Nevis on the right path and quickly being called the, 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 the number one in the CARICOM, that, was a, that, that shocked us. I didn't expect it to, I expect uh, that it can come. I always expect that it would come. But it came much quicker than expected. And it's from 2023, what took place in 2023. However, and he has claimed credit. And we know better, nonetheless. So we're not even going to address that and give it or give him any sort of credence. But if he is. Boasting so idly, look at it, my sweet dog family, examine it for yourselves. Our being number one on the HTI has not resulted in any boom in the country, or else it would be marked, for example, by significant GDP, GDP growth. There would have been increased commercial activity within either the business sector or the economy as a whole. But for these two small islands in the Caribbean Sea, St. Kitts and Nevis, I submit here tonight that there is a great potential for doom and or gloom in spite of all the numerous accolades that you'll hear from the political platform. A quick glance at our history reveals that we were once the mother colony of the West Indies, but that is going back centuries ago. So fast track to current times and after 40 years of independence, what is there for us as a federation to become excited about? And that is frightening, as we live in a world of complexity. We live in a world of unpredictability. And we live in a world of nerve-wracking uncertainty. Our democracy has failed us since August 2022. As the new July administration introduced a new system of government by Half the population, and not the whole. It's been doom and gloom around the country. Ever since the Team Unity Administration collapsed, the investors were waiting, according to July. The investors waited on the new Labour Administration. Yes, he said this. It's quite interesting that after the elections, a number of investors came forward. Mm. And they said, Dr. Joe, we had been waiting to invest in St. Kitts and Nevis. And they said, why you didn't do it then? And they said they couldn't do it under the last administration. So we are looking at that. So they will have more, you know, foreign investment um, that would help to, to stir the economy. But July was quick to blame, quick to criticize and equally as quick to punish the poorest amongst us. Look at what he did with the poverty alleviation program. 4,000 people were displaced. 4,000 and more, I may add. Because he came to government with a sinful motive <clears throat> Excuse me, to discredit Timothy Harris and his former administration. But he used a sinner, Garth Lucifer Wilkin, to cast the first stone, my sweet dog family. Garth Lucifer Wilkin shouted, 
and screamed about good governance. He shouted and screamed about transparency and accountability and integrity in public life. Garth Lucifer Wilkin gave us a lecture on integrity. You remember my straight dog family? He gave us a big lecture and said this. And I, I believe that it's important to know <coughs> that no true leader, no leader that excels in a leadership role can do so without integrity. And what is integrity? It's the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. Honesty, sincerity, strong moral principles. These are the key elements of integrity. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but he who makes his ways crooked will be found out. Amen. Amen. Very interesting lecture from the AG. He threatened to embarrass citizens with the introduction of a 70-30 rule. Garth Lucian Wilkin stood in the parliament and beat his chest as this new anti-corruption czar, this new anti-corruption minister, member of my street talk family. We are at a proverbial fork in the road in our history. And to lead that charge, lead that change, lead us down the right path, is the member for St. Christopher A. That is why he appointed me to be the anti-corruption minister. I am the anti-corruption minister. Let the people in this country know. Let it be known that this, the people's government, does not tolerate and will never tolerate abuses of the treasury by anyone. A new day and a better way is upon us. The people have asked for openness, fairness, accountability, and good governance from the people who sit on this side. That time is now to this country. Madam Speaker, I am proud personally to be a man of action, not one who just likes to bang his mouth. I can beat my chest. My straight talk family, he beat his chest. But it was not long before the country found out that Attorney General and Minister of Justice and Legal Affairs, God, Lucifer Wilkin, appealed to the law that he himself had broken. Just like his friend across the narrows, the snake Mark Bantley, the NIA Minister with Responsibility for Human Resource or Resources, and Minister of Finance, who deducted monies from the salary and wages from the poor public and civil servants, never matched their contributions, or worse yet, never paid them into the Social Security Board as prescribed by the law. He was written. I understand he ignored the letter from the Social Security Board. And those monies owed to the Social Security Board to be paid on behalf of his workers just keeps accumulating, accumulating. Understand it's well over $10 million. But so too, Garth Lucifer Wilkin deducted money from the wages of his poor nanny from St. Vincent and the Grenadines never matched her contribution and he too violated the law on several occasions. Three times he paid in two years. The day after being elected president of the St. Kitts Davis Bar Association, the day before he was appointed Attorney General, Minister of Justice and Legal Affairs, and three months after becoming Attorney General. Garth Lucifer Wilkin committed a criminal offense and so to his friend across the narrows. None of them are faultless, yet they want to pass judgment on others. Garth Lucifer Wilkin, my straight dog family, said it was a crime to spend money from the treasury without the procurement process. He said this, not me. He said this, my straight dog family. Our Procurement Act requires that there be a competitive bidding process 
to ensure the government gets value for money and it makes it a crime to spend money from the treasury without the procurement process being completed. Yes, he turned a blind eye to the money spent on the Robert Llewellyn Bradshaw Museum, my street dog family, by July. Turned a blind eye. Um, and we're hoping, really pushing to see if we can complete it by September 16th. I know that's a lofty goal, but we are really pushing. If not, definitely we want to complete it um, by this year. We expect it to cost in the region of maybe about $4 million. Construction is going on and to about maybe $4 million uh, grand total at the end of the day. But this $4 million, my sure dog family, skyrocketed to $8 million and should have been completed, according to him, by September 2022. In a few months, it will be two years. But suddenly, work has come to a screeching halt, my street dog family. Not one thing is going on down there. The work has come to a screeching halt. Nothing is happening at the RLB Museum. But we need to ask questions. We need to ask questions about or from or to the project manager, Victor Williams, who is listed. Yes, they have taken down the board. You won't see that if you drive around there now. But shouldn't Victor Williams give an account as the project manager of how this $8 million was spent? And of course, July as well must do the same. It was criminal, as well, Garth Lucifer Wilkins said, to spend the people's money without the procurement process. But he turned a blind eye, my straight dog family, to the $5.8 million literally given to Cashley Allers to procure 1,000 tanks. I call them water buckets. We have signed a contract to purchase water storage tanks. So at least when the water truck goes, they have a larger receptacle to store the water. I would also like to thank Mr. Ashley Allers, because he's the one who brought the idea of how we can help with the storage receptacles that we're going to launch. But Prime Minister July has only accounted to date for 500 Buckets, I call them. He'd said this in Parliament just about a month ago. As an interim measure, the government introduced a new water tank, a new water storage tank project to ease the suffering of residents by improving access to water, access to water by um, affected households. Under the project, we have already distributed over 250 tanks primarily to vulnerable residents in Upper Kayon, White's Village, Sarabori, Cabitry, and Spooner's Village. Water shortage tanks were also distributed to the residents of St. Peter's. A total of 314 water storage tanks were supplied to households throughout the Upper Monkey Hill, the Glen, Paris Village, Fountain, and Stapleton, bringing the total distribution under the water project to about 500 or more. About 500 or more. So where are the other 500 tanks, Prime Minister July? So I keep asking this question. Who committed the crime? Cashley Allers or Terence Michael Drew? A contract was also signed by Street Dog family we understand was about to be signed, I really should say. Uh, according to the Soka engineer, a contract we learned it's for 14 million US dollars for a desalination plant, which was literally handed to Royal Utilities without due process according to the Procurement Act. 
The so-called engineer Congress tried to cover up by reporting this to the Federation by Street Dog family. He said this to us. The Attorney General's office has confirmed that the contract agreement for the new desalination plant is just about ready for sign off. And so we should be signing that contract very shortly for the construction of the 2 million gallon desalination plant, which is proposed to be located on the industrial site where the Texaco bulk facility used to be. This is right next to the ocean, actually, and it's an ideal location for the capture of water and then the distribution to nearby 2 million gallons and storage in Bird Rock and even reaching storage as far as um, Lagreed. Um, we had evaluated three proposals and Royal Utilities was the selected developer and so the contract will be signed with Royal Utilities and we are at the final stages of that. Um, and once the contract is signed, we anticipate that construction will take maybe up to about eight months to get this additional two million gallons of water into our system. What is the disposition of this contract? And up to this moment, the Soka Engineer Congress has not said and cannot say who are the other two that submitted proposals because there are no other proposals. None. My street dog family, we talk about doom and gloom. Remember that the Minister of Finance and Prime Minister July claimed that the country was in the red. Remember that? We are in the red, dependent heavily on CBI, and therefore we have to now chart a different course in order to make sure that St. Kitts and Nevis remain strong and, and, and viable, but it has, but we are very vulnerable at the same time. And my straight talk family, suddenly, he found millions of dollars he claimed he saved for a rainy day. Millions of dollars left by Timothy Harris. You heard it straight from the Prime Minister's mouth. It's not a fake. All public servants will be getting a double salary. But uh, PM, where is this coming from? Because here in Antigua and Barbuda, our government has not been able to offer stimulus to Antiguans and Barbudans during COVID. And we keep hearing of all these great initiatives in your, in your country. Have you discovered oil somewhere in Bastia? <laughs> I can't say we have discovered oil. Let me say that each country has, has its own response, but this has been our response. I can't say we, have, we don't have oil, of course. We had um, um, some uh, monies put away for a long time now mm -hmm. um, that okay. we would use during a rainy day. All of a sudden, he found money for a rainy day. Prime Minister July stopped every shovel-ready project he met, which resulted in a stagnant economy and put many of our contractors out of work, my street dog family. And they're still out of work as we speak. There was a shovel-ready project, which is the Bastia High School. The project had already, the, the plans had already been done. The impact um, studies are already done, but you choose to shelf it. Today, the ordinary man, construction workers, instead of having the tools rust in, could have been there working. People could have been earning money at the bar of the high school. And why he was why why he was shut down? Because of politics, he had nothing to do with with um, water um, the water situation. So we got to be careful. It's politics why the country is stagnant. As a matter of fact, since the change of government, I am involved in construction. I haven't worked for the year. The country is stagnant. Are actually maybe in reverse. It ain't got nothing to do with the farm administration. It is. I I think it's because of incompetence why we are facing the situation that we are facing. Stagnant because politics under July overrides every decision. Look at what's happening with water. Politics 
overriding water. Look at the medicinal cannabis industry. Prime Minister July met a proposal with recommendations from the St. Kitts Nevis Marijuana Commission that was put together by Cabinet in April of 2017 and was given a mandate to accomplish some objectives, including to conduct a situational analysis and explore the latest evidence regarding the legal, medical, social, economic, and religious implications of the use and abuse of marijuana and its derivatives. To engage all the people of the Federation through town hall meetings and focus group discussions. The commission began its work on the 5th of October 2017 and 15 months later on the 10th of January 2019 presented its report to the office of the Prime Minister. Cabinet on Monday the 18th February 2019 deliberated on the report and engaged the commissioners on the said report. The report established important signposts and gave guidance to the government. The cabinet accepted the unanimous recommendations of the commission, which included the establishment of a medicinal licensing authority to regulate importation, local cultivation, and production of marijuana. There was a, also a cannabis implementation core committee that included experts from the legal and medical professions, from business and religious communities, research and development, cannabis standards, and a substantial representation from the Rastafarian community. The committee also made recommendations to move the medicinal cannabis industry forward, which included the establishment of a medicinal cannabis authority and the appointment of a board and critical staff members. A CEO in the person of Dr. Dale Crawford was appointed, but was unceremoniously sent home by Prime Minister July and subsequently replaced by Dr. Garfield Alexander. Next we heard his Minister of Agriculture speaking about or making a promise, I should say, to grow marijuana on trees. Remember that? The marijuana industry, as we have heard, is a multi-billion dollar industry. And we have been dragging at a snail's pace in getting involved. And I could not understand for the life of me why. Literally growing money on trees. But yet somehow, we don't want that. But I dare say, that era is over. And it's now a new day. And a better way. So in 2023, expect a vibrant, thriving marijuana industry. Literally growing money on trees. <laughs> It's not a laughing matter, my straight dog family, because 2023 has come and gone. And all the country has so far is a diversification promise for medical tourism as well, my straight dog family. There is a international celebration on the 20th of the fourth month, that's this month, the 20th of April, where we celebrate our cannabis. Um, internationally, not just locally. And this year we are proposing that the festival be 420 friendly. We are currently working with the legal team and security forces to discuss this plan and more information, of course, will be provided to you over the next few weeks. But as we talk on diversifying our offerings and products, uh, those of you who have been following us would see that we want to venture into cannabis tourism and this is one of the pilot projects that we would venture into as we continue our efforts to diversify our offerings as a destination. The first round of Artis was released on March. And that was last year, my Street Dog family. 
a promise to venture into medical or cannabis tourism. A space was dedicated at the music festival for patrons to smoke their weed, remember. These special zones were established. The new CEO, Dr. Garfield Alexander, seems to use a pen that is shaped like or is a big chalice that he always smoke his weed or his cannabis or his marijuana. But my sweet dog family, it is the CBI that is quite bothersome. Imagine a convicted felon is now the face of our CBI. The snake Mark Brantley, who the snake, who the snake Mark Brantley, I should say, sneaked into Nevis. Sneaked this French convict under the guise that he was going to make 35 films. You understand he managed to produce nine of those 35. What's happening to the remainder, we don't know. But the scandalous truth, however, is that his partnership with the snake Mark Brantley earned this convicted felon $150,000 per month for almost three years, my straight dog family. Do the mathematics, do the maths. Mark Brantley, who is the premier of Nevis, um, uh, decided wanted to diversify the economy. Yes, there is a financial arrangement with MSR. I believe the number is $150,000. We are prepared to do 35 films. Uh, over the next five years. Uh, along with our development, we are uh, finalizing the purchase of a hotel in St. Kitts. Yes, and you know, and uh, as we have spoken before, that you will definitely have our support. And mathematics is my strongest weak point. You always hear me say that. So you do the sums, my street dog family. And I'm sure you will come to the conclusion that millions of dollars Nearly $30 million over the two and a half or three years came from the Nevis Island Administration Treasury to pay on behalf of this convict. And I say scandalous truth because the snake Mark Brantley in fact sneaked this convicted French criminal Martinez into Nevis at the height of COVID-19 when the country was under lockdown. He bullied the health authorities in Nevis and the federal cabinet then eventually he got his way. The snake Mark Brantley did not stop there. He then hoodwinked his cabinet into believing that after the required due diligence was done that Philippe Martinez was clean. Administrations changed and he also hoodwinked Terence Michael July into finalizing the purchase of the Ocean Terrace Inn, the Otay Hotel, I should say. The snake Mark Brantley created the biggest scandal of all by convincing the new Prime Minister Terence Michael July to make this convicted felon the new face of our CBI. No wonder the results we are witnessing from the CBI that July warned us about. Remember he warned us about this, my straight dog family? Because the rough patch is going to come because of the CBI program. The CBI program has taken a hit. I will, ex I will in the next two weeks or so, but in short order, two weeks to a month, have a statement on the CBI program. Now that we are completing its audit and why it's under, why it's you know, facing some challenges and why. Mm -hmm. That is important, the why. Facing challenges, my straight dog family. But with a criminal, a criminal, my straight dog family, being the sole investor and face of the public be benefit option, it can be no surprise that from number one, we are the second to last in the OECS, my straight dog family, as it relates to ranking. That's what has become of our CBI 
program under Prime Minister Terence Michael Jew and Street Dog family. Those are the in the facts. But what the future holds for us all or all of us, it is not uncertain. What the future holds is not unpredictable. For as long as we have an administration led by Terence Michael July, whose deputy is a self-confessed slow student, but they all claim to be experts. But our fundamental rights and freedoms are under attack, my street dog family, and we have all lost hope in our representatives, our elected representatives, I may add. But who to blame but ourselves, as we did not ensure that they underwent a rigorous test of leadership quality, my street dog family. We failed to conduct that test, I must say, my street dog family. But in the meantime, sad and tragic events continued to occur in St. Kitts and Nevis. And from all indications, things will get worse, my street dog family. There were three murders in just as many days in St. Kitts and Nevis. Almost four, because one man is nursing injuries, injuries. almost five, because two, rather, are nursing injuries at the Joseph N. France General Hospital. And that makes 11 murders for the year. And believe it or not, Terence Michael July, in 20 months, has had, under his watch, as Prime Minister and Minister of National Security, 50 murders. 50 murders in 20 months under Terence Michael Drew. And while Senkis Nevis is burning and families are hurting, our Prime Minister is on his honeymoon in Dubai and posted this obnoxious message on his Facebook page, my street dog family. How many of you saw this? Obnoxious, I say. And he's trying to tell us in this message that security matters. Security matters not to Terence Michael Drew. Imagine. Imagine he's running the country on social media from his iPhone 15 Plus. Yes, he's running the country from his smartphone. And we can say the Blackberry days are over. He's now using his iPhone 15. But my street dog family, in the meanwhile, the Federation is collapsing. St. Kitts and Nevis is on fire. And I warn you, my street dog family, that the content of my next video is graphic. But this is a summary of what's happening here in our beloved country under Terence Michael July. My street dog family. Mr. Long time ago, we took a police patrol in the world. The police patrol in the world now. Yeah, I mean, man, coming around in the Jeep and I came, picking on the ones the people. I mean, people talk like they want to bang them up and all the kind of things there. But me can't get me to talk like I'm not playing nobody. You know, hey, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play one person. Hi there, my street dog family. And bodies are lying on the streets in Bastille. Sadly, in my own community of East Bastille, over the last two days, two bodies have lied on the same street. Yet, our Prime Minister 
is in faraway land. Take a look yourself. Every time he travels is a double murder or murders. My Shudok family, we have a leader who is incompetent. And when we look at this video again, I said to you, it is graphic. So prepare yourselves. When we look at this video and see that body lying on the ground, wounded, dead. And we ask ourselves, why did Terence Michael Jew focus on repairs to the mall? Morgue is where we take dead bodies. Was Terence Michael Jew preparing for this eventuality, my sure dog family? Yes. He told us about the morgue, the repairs to the morgue, just about two weeks ago. He told us that repairs were done to the morgue, my straight dog family. And we asked ourselves, is this a coincidence, my straight dog family? Is it? Ask yourself the question. Because Terence Michael Jew said this, just a few, about two weeks ago, he said in a Boston way, he said this, my straight talk family. The morgue, the morgue was in dilapidated condition. I'm sure if any of you would have gone there because of investigative purposes and you see the morgue, you'll be so disappointed. Somebody told me once they're standing in the morgue and the water coming through the roof dropping down in the mug. We have put an end to So his focus, instead of focusing on the equipment in the hospital, for two years now we say he's getting a, an MRI, which was in the budget in 2022, approved by the parliament. It's still not here. He begged some used equipment and tried to fool us and say that they were new. But instead of focusing on the quality of service, the equipment at the hospital, he's focusing on a morgue. Did he know that this was going to happen, my straight dog family? You see, long time ago, we used to have police patrol in the world. The police patrol in the world now. Yeah, I mean, then coming around in your jeep and I came, picking on the wrong for people. I mean, people talk like they want to bang them up and all them come to you. But me can't see me a talk like I'm not playing nobody. You know, hey, that's what funny was me. Me play one foot to the car. And that's St. Kitts and Nevis, my street dog family. Bodies lying on the road. High day. Shot to death. And we have a leader who is incompetent. And my street dog family, we are at an intersection that requires a GPS to maneuver around this doom and gloom in St. Kitts and Nevis and the convict selling our passports. That's my story tonight, my street dog family, and I am not going to change it. But I'll open the lines, and I'm sure that you will have your input from your perspective. That was mine. And that's what street dog is all about. We entertain all views. We entertain a diversity of views. So I'll open the lines, and the numbers are well known, my street dog family. I always like to employ you, though. When I open the lines, I anticipate that you will respect others. And of course, to achieve that, you must first respect yourselves. Let us try to be fair to all concern, and let us try to build goodwill and better friendships. Let us ensure that the things we say and our do will be beneficial to all concerned. And in the process of saying and doing those things, let us 
strive to build a kinder, gentler St. Kitts and Nevis. It's three past the nine o'clock hour, my Street Dog family. If you have just joined us, we are discussing the doom and gloom and the convict that's selling our passports. Let's go to the lines and take our first call. Caller, you're live. Hello, caller. I did. Oh, my. Yes, the Bible man. You always get in first. What you do? Well, um, yes, 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 Mr. Patrick. What you do to do? To, to, uh, yes, yes, Mr. Patrick. We now need your spiritual intervention. We now, Hello? Need, we now need your spiritual intervention, I said, you know, whether from this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Patrick. So. Patrick. Yes, my lord. I am reading from Psalm 37. Fret not yourself. Is that? Yes. I got it. Thank you, man. Fret not yourself because of evil doers. Neither. Neither be envious yeah. against the work of iniquity. Yes, yes. But as soon cut down like a grass. Mm-hmm. That is. He said, trust in the Lord and do good. And don't really tell me that. Now, listen, Patches. To verse 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth. Yes, yes. And it shall be the light themselves in a band of, of peace. Here, number 12, Patrick. When the wicked plotted against the joint and grinded upon his, with his teeth, the Lord shall laugh at him. For he see, his day is coming soon. When the, the wicked had drawn out the sword and bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy, they saw such as of the upright in their conversation. That is, last week you tell me you want sand. Mm-hmm. And I know the Bible. And as a bad man, I am going to give you what you want. Thank you. Thank you, I want to say tonight, Mr. Pat. When the wicked plotted against the God and grinded his teeth, the Lord is saying the Lord, a second word, the Lord shall laugh at him because his day is coming soon. Do not play around God, people. God ain't like it. Okay. So, whoever want to interfere, they are going to get what they're looking for. Okay. I said the word of God said, touch not the Lord anointed do his prophet no harm. God don't make you work. Let me tell you something. I can finish now. Easy. Let me tell you something. A lot of people play with God. Yeah. But when God start to move in this country and things start to happen, man gone bad. That is a good night. See you. Have a good night as well. My straight talk family, that's the Bible man. Always getting first. I it's probably times this pretty well, but we always welcome uh, the spiritual spiritual intervention. And I, I 
as I said to him, I like when he comes from the book of Psalms, I tend to jog my my memory on the Psalms and see if I got it right, and I got uh, Psalm 37 right. I'm sure many of you uh, knew that, or uh, know that as well, fret not thyself because of evildoers. It's 9.08. Our lines are open, my straight dog family. You may have just joined us, and we are discussing that thesis tonight, doom and gloom in St. Kitts and Nevis. Crime. We haven't touched the water. We haven't touched the housing. We haven't touched health in any details. But this crime has creeped right back into the fabric of our society. Remember when the team unity introduced the alternative lifestyle program, murders went down to 10. Prime Minister Terence Michael July when he came in, he said that we will have it in single figures. His national security advisor said we'll have one per month. And if we have one per month, he anticipated we'll have 12 for this year. But we are one short of that 12. And it's frightening. It is frightening, my straight talk family. And we all ought to be concerned because this administration is not doing well in any area, period. Nothing is happening with our country, my straight dog family. And I am here worried again Seems as every other program, my my um, overseas line seem to be messing up, so to speak. Let me see what's happening here, my sweet dog family. But you can access it via WhatsApp as well. I keep saying that I don't know why we don't use it, but uh, my sweet dog family. The numbers are again. Yes, if you try the overseas number now, again, it's 646-829-6672. The email address is actually on your screen. The numbers are on your screen, I should say, as well. But my overseas line is functioning, I can assure you, my straight dog family. And so to my email platform. Mr. Patches reads this email. I am living in England and my parents left some land in Sandy Point. I tried to come and look after it when I come to the island. A few years ago, I came and found someone living on the land. The person, he cleaned it off, so he wants compensation. I spoke to my solicitor and he advised me not to pay him anything because no one told him to do so. Why people won't leave people's land alone? Reads this email. Very interesting. I especially you see issues in the United States about these squatters as well. And some silly legislation about the people occupying your properties and cannot uh, get them out in some states. I don't know what is wrong with this email with this man, Sam Kondo. Every time he gets on a radio or some public platform, if he 
calling Harris's name. Harris this, Harris Harris that, Harris PLP is a one-man party and will not last. I wonder if he forgets that it was, not if it was not for Harris, he would still be disbanded from entering the USA and all the US territories. I used to be sorry for the man, or Douglas used to treat him like a puppy dog as his deputy and considered him a novice. Also, the Speaker Curtis Martin called him all sorts of names in Parliament associated with stupidity. I was never stooped to that low level to demean this man, as his labor comrades, his labor comrades has done, have done, and he find himself back in bed with them. Sam, let me warn you, you're provoking Harris to answer you. You and he will expose your naked, expose you naked as you're born with this email. It's 9.14, my straight dog family, and my lines have gone quiet. Isn't that strange? Hope they are functioning. Uh, but it's 9.14, and for those who may have joined me for the first time, Straight Talk is heard every Monday and Thursday from 8 to 10 in the PM. I met a gentleman from England a few days ago, and he's suggesting that you should consider starting early because he has to be up at one o'clock in the morning in the UK. So I want to uh, thank all the UK Straight Talk family who see up that time of the morning to listen to Straight Talk. And uh, for the UK posse, I say good morning to you and those in Europe and elsewhere who, uh, who, who have to... Brave the midnight hour and be deprived of your sleep just to get to know what's happening in your country. And that's not a bad thing, except that you would lose some sleep, my straight dog family. This other email reads, Dwyer, why don't you shut up and keep quiet? Don't you realize that no one is taking you on? Not even the man whom you fought so hard for to destroy Douglas, to relinquish the leadership of the Labour Party. You're also talking your nonsense that the country was opened late during the COVID period. The country was opened at the time when the medical technocrats saw it fit. God bless them. And bless Timothy as well for taking their advice that saved many lives. Long live Timothy Harris. Reads this other email. There are concerns regarding the use and construction of desalination plants. Though we welcome the efforts to produce additional water, questions remain. Reads this email. At which point will an EIA be done? How? And where will the brine and other chemicals used in the production of the water be disposed? What will be the effect, if any, on the fishing industry or any ocean ecosystems? With this email. Very interesting perspective. Patches. I don't know what to say anymore, but it is very saddening what is happening in my country. I am fed up of the government, the private minister Jew, the prime minister Jew, because he is not considered a prime minister in my eyes. He said private minister, okay. He's doing some, nothing about the crime in St. Kitts, nothing to curb the peace. He and his ministers took the peace money and pocketed it. There's nothing 
to come from his labor government. Why the people in this country, uh, I'm sorry, caller, I was trying to finish this email, but you can call back uh, right now. There's nothing good to come from this labor government. Why the people in St. Kitts thinks labor is the best to run St. Kitts. Why? As he drew gone Dubai, the place is flooded. That man is walking with hell. Jew don't come back here. Jew is worse than Douglas. I like Douglas and I loved him, but I could never like Jew. Read this email. Yes, my callers, I, I have not ignored you, but I was actually uh, trying to complete that email. You might have just joined me, my Straight Talk family, and we have been looking at our thesis in particular, Doom and gloom in St. Kitts and Nevis and a convict selling passports. And we have made the point or tried to make the point that if there is a boom and the Prime Minister has uh, or rather, yes, the, the Prime Minister boasted about the HTI. But let's go back to the lines and I'll get back to that. Caller, you're live. Hello, caller. Good night. Good night, my dear. And how late, are invita- late invitation suit fools, eh? You know that? You, you got a late invitation? Okay. Anyway, for you to find out. <laughs> anyway, what I want to say, right? The joy riders keep saying nothing was doing but not staying home to finish what to finish, going from country to country. How much gone this time? They must settle down. None can walk in bestimity shoe. Four buildings to finish and we'll say is them is them start them and is them finish them. And uh, they was there saying all the other things. No, I hope that J. Tomal don't start and stop like the others. The cheaters, backbiters, sabotagers was on the best Timothy. He did not turn them away like how they were to turn away people like right now. Stay strong, best prime minister. Eight less than 33 and 33 more than eight. And they want to meet me and tell me about me own and me always on radio. As old as a bee. Where the young boys them, where the young people them, and where them, they ain't gonna come old. Tell them nobody study me and have no problem over me. See you good night. Thursday God, was my birthday and you don't <laughs> call me to ask me happy birthday. I don't oh, you man, laugh me and I'm sorry. Me and I laugh that. With you. I am sorry. No, no, that. sorry. Well, oh, maybe you yeah. ain't no. I maybe you know. ain't no. I didn't know. I didn't maybe know. you don't know, so you know. don't have to sorry, but okay. I'm telling you late invitation suit fools. I'll, have a good <laughs> night and a good weekend. You could laugh to the tongue drop out. <laughs> Have See a good you. Night. Have a good happy belated yes. birthday, my dear lady. I'll, I'll tell you late invitation to <laughs> We'll we'll make up we'll make up for that. We'll make up for that. Let's go back to the lines caller. Thank you for holding your life. Good night, Mr. Patches. Uh, good night, my dear. Your Alexa is not working. Is not? No. Been trying to call and it's not working. Okay, I'll uh, look into that, my dear. Lady, I do apologize okay. for that. But, uh, okay. You know, but thanks for informing us. Thanks a lot, my dear. Okay, okay take care. Take care, my dear. Bye. Let okay, us... bye-bye. Bye-bye, thanks. Bye-bye, thanks. Bye. And 33 and 33 more than... Yes. Uh, I call him. I'm a, I'm a, I apologize for that. I think I knocked you off uh, inadvertently. I do apologize for that. And for the Alexa Massive, I've just learned that Alexa is not working. Massive Vibes Radio, uh, have you locked me out? Uh, but let's go back to the lines. My Street Talk family caller, you're live. It's 922. Good, good evening, Patches. Good evening, my dear brother. 
and all the fans of Straight Talk. I, I, I had planned to say hello to everybody, but you all know how it is. But let me say hello to SO and Paulette. Paulette, my condolences to you because I know you just lost two relatives. And everybody, I wish everybody well. No patches. You have, you have, you're, you're, close, you're close to your equipment or something there, you're getting the feedback. You know how it is, you know. I, I just got a problem to get that data now, you know. Okay, okay. Not me. <laughs> because I, 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 okay, okay. that's why sometimes I don't reluctant to call in, you know. Okay, go ahead. Anyway. We'll make them, we'll make them. 50 models in St. Kitts in 20 months and a new Prime Minister, so-called Prime Minister, and he criticized the former administration about a lot of things, so that the farm administration were paying people to, to, to stop shoot people. But the better he continued the pain, because when they were paying, the crime went way down, sure. even though there were other ways to deal with the situation. But he had it down, and he, he abandoned that. And now look what happened. Look the amount of models, the amount of models. In, 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 in 72 hours and, and and 13 hours happen under he that man who do not know how to run a country he just like somebody who go in a shop go walk and when they go in there they're surprised they don't know they cannot read the label them so they, they're taking the wrong things and selling people that is how we run in the country he had no plan he never expect that he would have been in such a high position to say he's the leader of the country that is why he got the country upside down. Right now, people in the diaspora who do, who, who do, who do, not, do not know what is going on here, right now, the crime got St. Kitts upside down. Upside down. He, Dr. Joe run the ship, economical, the, the economical ship ashore. And I always say he need all hands on deck. Take up a oar and oar the ship off the, off the reef. Otherwise, all are we going to drown. But right now, the way this country running under his leadership, the water reaches up to his lip and we soon drown. So he gone, every time he go up on one, every time he go up on one, he, um, he portfolio, he portfolio, that means go away. That portfolio is go away. Every time he go away, we got pat out pow in the country. When he ain't one, is two. When he ain't two, is three. And look where he can go do now. Go run the country when he phone. Dr. Douglas tried it some time ago. He said he could run the country from Blackberry. And that was insult. That was insult to the Kunumuno voice, um, what, what do you call him, the boy? Prime Minister, the voice from the Deputy Prime Minister. Insult him. And now he come talking about, he talking about Harris. He better talk about he better shut him out because me know a lot of things about he too. And whenever the time comes, I'm going to open him out and talk. Dr. Joe went to the hospital talking about Mog. Look at the roof in the Mog. What roof in the Mog, boy? Eh? Control, the, control the, the, the administration of the hospital. Otherwise, problems will happen up there. It would not have happened. You need to come back home and, and, and get the hospital smart in operation at the building. That is all come back, but a lot of rain falling over here, so if you don't hear me, it's because the rain coming through the phone. Mm. I'll be back. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, my brother. Uh, we heard you loud and clear, uh, my dear brother. And you raised a point, and it's a very important point that we ought to look at. Because Dr. Drew focused on repairing the morgue and morgues are facilities for dead bodies so you ask yourselves why was the focus on the morgue now we have all these dead bodies call your life hello caller yeah good evening mr patches man how you doing mr Lyberg? i am peaceful my dear brother a little sad but i'm peaceful what about you yeah well I hope I hope that lady cheered you up, man. Keep 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 Alexa in the mix, man. Yes, yes. 
Certainly. Certainly. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of uh, you know tech tech heads out there. That is true. They're right on top of that technology, man. So you know you gotta yeah. you gotta make sure Alex is you know doing her thing, man. That's right. Um, I apologize for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Got you. Got you. Uh, um, I didn't really want to miss it tonight, man. So you know, I'm happy I got up. Okay. Um, it don't really matter what your theme or your thesis is tonight for me. You know, everyone across the world who's skittish on their vision, they know what's going on in their own country. Uh, and there's a lot of there's a lot of pre- persons that are very concerned. You know, me, I'm very concerned as well. And you know, the clip with the the national the security advisor, I want you to put that clip on tonight, man, for some um, pe- persons in the media to hear that clip. You know, twelve murders. You know, he he he. he the guy put a target on the federation. Twelve murders for the year. Well, we're knocking hard on that 12. We're knocking hard on that 12, 12, number 12 right now. You know what I'm saying? And my personal observation, man, you know, when I come out here and I talk, some people might not want to hear what I'm, I'm saying, but, you know, me as a person, I'm, I'm not going to hold no water in my mouth, man. What is what is happening real on the ground in St. Chris and Nevis is happening for real. If you if you on your porch, if you on your porch and a, and a, and a, and a vehicle pass by and run over a kid in the street, and your eyes see that happen, you cannot you cannot be in shock, man. You cannot be wondering what your eyes just saw. You just saw a vehicle run over somebody, a kid in the street. You can't get no realer than that, bro. You know what I mean? But me personally, I want to see some protests, peaceful protests happening in the streets, right up right up in front of that government building there in Bass there, man. When the national issues come up, you know, a lot of lip service going on in St. Kitts and Nevis, man. And persons, they're scared to speak up. This crime thing that's happening is very, very complex and it's multifaceted. You can take everybody to come on board. You know what I mean? Crime is everybody's business. True. It doesn't have anything to do with party. You know what I mean? True. And too much politics in the place. Too much politics in the place, man. Too much division amongst the people i know anybody all of us know once a leader take control of a country and wins the election one of the biggest order of business is to unite the country after that but i don't see that happening bro i see the party politics is continuing after the election passes you know what i mean the leader got to unite the country you know like these guys are jumping on these planes and going abroad and they want to dance abroad before they dance a the yard. You cannot neglect the people like that on the ground, bro. You got to steer it to people. And the people are sinking some nervous, man. They got to pay attention to what's going on. They have to. They cannot let these politicians keep tricking them. You know what I mean? You know, that their, their, their favorite caller, man. Change and change until we get the change again. You know, the man don't want to go into parliament and pass the term limit bill, even when they're in the majority again right now. You know what I mean? We keep blame, blame on previous administrations. We have to deal with who is at the control right now. You know, a lot of people is coming from political points. Sometimes we are too, yeah, but it ain't all the time we're going to blame the government, right? Nobody's trying to blame them. People is just saying that they, they are in control right now and we can't give them a pass either. We cannot give them a pass either, bro. You cannot be abroad telling me you want to run Sinkis and Nevis from your, from your phone, bro. You cannot tell me that, man. Yo, you, we see what happened in Haiti. Ariel Henry went abroad, and I, who knows if this man is back in Haiti yet. The gangsters then take over and say, yo, you're not coming back here. We see that played out in Haiti, bro. You know what I mean? The whole Caribbean region was a region where we were, was considered the most peaceful on the earth. But it's rapidly changing right now, bro. They're flooding the Caribbean with guns, bro. And Sinki San Nevis is no exception to the rule. You know, we, is a, we are a little country, and we're going to get overrun, bro. We're going to get overrun. There's a lot of trafficking in, in with guns coming in, into the place, bro. There's more guns in Sinki San Nevis probably than, more than what people. You know what I mean? We already know the monkeys them taking over. The guns taking over now. You know? I, I, I wish I was, I, I, I want all these people that be calling in on the radio, 
they need to unite together, man. And if they so dissatisfied with the performance of the government, will we be we, we come and peacefully protest together when, when the issues rise to the national level above the, the party politics, man? And this crime situation is one such issue. This issue got to be handled, but we cannot be letting this shit just keep sliding, slide whining down the road. You know what I mean? When, when, when Sinkis and Nevis become like Haiti, I want to see what you are going to do there, bro. We got to take, we got to, the people got to take the country back in their hands and show these politicians that they got the power in their hands. And the only way to do that is to unite, bro. We have to get Sinkis and Uni Nevis united. You know what I mean? The politicians, they're in the minority, but these people, they're moving away from the people all the time. They're acting like they're some elitists. You know what I mean? We got to demonstrate and show these people we got the real control. Sinkis Nevis is the only place that I don't see no protests happening, bro. All are here all day, all night. Blah, 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 blah. But it's too much lip service in this federation. Too much lip service in this federation, man. We need, we need new leadership and new options. There's a lot of women there on the ground that's very smart and, and they got this, they got this, um, excuse me, they got this, they got this, they got this, this, this progressive ideas in their head. And we as a country, we're not even giving these women a chance, bro. You know, big up to my, big up to somebody there named Michelina. And, you know, there's some other women that I've been listening to on the radio talking, man. And these women got to be given a chance. I hope and wish that Pam, a woman, step up and take leadership at that Pam party. Sinkis and Nevis need to go in a different direction. You know what I mean? We need new leadership and we need new options. Somebody that will rise up in Sinkis and Nevis above the party level. And when that person rise up, I will be happy, man. The place needs some real leaders, man, and some strong leaders too. You know, Sinkis and Nevis people, you all got to rise up, man. And, and, and stand up for your rights, equal rights and justice. But Patches, thanks a lot, man. I have a lot to say, bro. But if I get on here and keep talking, I could take up your whole program. <laughs> I observed a moment of silence last week, yes. and it looked like I did that too soon. It's another moment of silence. Being, lots, lots of moments of silence need to be observed, bro. A lot of people is dying, man. We yeah. cannot be just watching our young youths them die, bro. We got to provide jobs for these people. The notion about the country open up late, yeah, when in cricket, bro, who's facing the heat when they go down to bat, bro? The open batsman. Mm. That comment about the from the prime minister, but the country keep he keeps saying about the country open late. I don't buy that, bro, because you know after that, show me and tell me what jobs really being created for the youths, bro. We got to lift the people out of poverty, man, and we got to provide jobs for the youths, man. The country is running astray, and people. Need to speak up, man, and stop being so quiet and timid and naive. That's my contribution for the night, Patches. Thank and you. ten seconds, man. Moments of moments of silence. Everybody can observe their own individual ten seconds. You know, I, I did mine, man. I can't sit by and watch this country keep running away, man. You all, you all think that Sinkis and Nevis can't turn like Haiti? The whole Caribbean about to be like that, bro. Thanks a lot, man. You guys have a good night, bro. Thank you very much, my dear brother. Uh, that was a mouthful, and I can understand you, and we can all appreciate it. And I believe that we are too passive people. I mean, in 1935, uprising started here in St. Kitts, and that has caused to blossom all over the Caribbean trade unions. What's happened to our people here in St. Kitts? And Nevis, I should add. And you made mention of the comment by our National Security Advisor. My friend, Lady Lucy Rollins. My bandmate, I should say. And Lucy Rollins had this to say about... A month or two ago, he said this. Five years, you will not recognize St. Kitts and Nevis because it will be such a wonderful place. We will, with all of this stuff we're talking about, it's going to be a thing of the past. Just take a, one look at it. If we had one murder a month for 2024, as terrible as it sounds, 
We will only have 12. <laughs> Imagine that. We have 11 so far. And what is really offensive, though, is this Prime Minister and Minister of National Security who believes he sh can run this government from his iPhone 15, I understand he has. And he sent this message uh, to the country. And I read it. As you know, I am currently in the United Arab Emirates negotiating with tremendous success the economic prosperity of St. Kitts and Nevis. However, I am still very much in tune with everything happening at home. Let me first extend my sincerest condolences to the families and friends and wish all a speedy recovery. Recovery, they have died. I have been in touch with the Commissioner of Police, the Commander of the Military, and the National Security Advisor to get an assessment of what is taking place and their strategy for the continued protection. I'm sorry, I took that off the screen. You should be reading with me. I'm sorry about that, my street dog family. I've been in touch with the Commissioner of Police, the Commander of the Military. Yes, he means the Defense Force and the National Security Advisor to get an assessment of what is taking place and the strategy for the continued protection of our citizens and our national security. I want to reassure the public, it continues, that the national security of St. Kitts and Nevis remains solidly intact and these random occurrences are being dealt with. We will continue to invest significantly in our national security as you the people are our number one priority. By way of update, we are in the final stage of establishing our citizen security secretariat. We ask for the public's continued cooperation with and support for the security forces. Hashtag security matters. I wonder if security matters for the Minister of National Security. I thought he would have said, I'm on my way home. I'll drink my last glass of camel milk and come back to St. Kitts forthwith. But he stopped short of saying that. While St. Kitts is burning, he's having his caviar and steak. And this is what's happening and that message was from yesterday. That post, rather, was from yesterday. And this is what happened today in St. Kitts, my straight dog family. Sadly, I must say, this is what transpired in St. Kitts today in my constituency at John Street to be exact. A body, and I'm one, I forewarn you, it's graphic. So prepare yourself. It's a long time ago we used to got police patrol in the world. The police patrol in the world now. Yeah, I mean, then coming around in the Jeep and I came, picking on the wrong set people. I mean, people talk like they want to bang them up and all they're going to think there. But me can't give me a talk like I'm not playing nobody. You know, hey, that's what police was making me play one foot to be gone. I should talk for me. And Carla, I forgive me. I I I have you on hold for some time. I'm, I I do I beg your pardon for that. Carla, are you still there? Are you there, Carla? I'm not hearing that, Carla. What's going on here? Yes, but I'm here. Okay, you're live. Go ahead, you're live. Okay, yes. Yeah. When dicta all dictators, they are afraid of outspoken persons. That is the reason why they cut you off the next day after they say they win election, they buy the election. And like you, like me, they're afraid of my mouth too. So they try to stop me 
from a program I had on the, on, on the, on the government radio station. They tried to stop me, and that program was a help to people who had pressure and give them a smile for the day. But they cannot stop me, I'm all over the place. Now look here, Patrick. Dr. Joe is so ignorant. He's a very ignorant person to say he's a leader of a country. When he win the leadership of the Labour Party, a caller, he was on a radio station, and a caller, a well-known educated educator, teacher, experienced ex-teacher lady called him. And she said to him like this, I think you should go and sit down, have a talk with Dr. Harris. That time Dr. Harris was the Prime Minister. And I heard Drew say this to him for myself. I don't want to have nothing to do with Harris. I have nothing to say to that man. Let him go he going. No, if he had gone to, to sit down and, 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 and uh, dialogue with Dr. Harris, the country would have been in better shape. He would have known what to do and how to run a country. But through his, ig his ignorance, that is what happened there, and he will never learn. Never learn because he has no respect for the elders before him. And you know the good book say, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Well, who can train who? The child can train the parents? No, the parents have to train the child. And he is a child when it comes to politics and leadership of our country. That's why he don't know what to do. But he got it to face. He have it to face because blood is on this country here. Curse and it and the curse come from the head. Because of what he believe in, he do not believe in no God. Otherwise he would not have been behaving like how he is behaving. And every time he going away, he wanted big entourage. So he come like everybody who go with him. Each of them have to take a letter, write down a letter in the diary, a letter out of the alphabet. That, that's all they're going with for because when they come back, they have nothing to show what they bring back from out there. But thoughts, oh, we're going we're gonna to have a, a meeting with this, this organization. We're going to that organization. What, what have they done? What have they done in, 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 um, in 20 months? Nothing but big talks and plans and nothing is doing to this country. And like, like, like slide went say already, I always say, you know, is it time for us to get brave? Nigga in sync it, are you get up? Stop chat, stop talk. What we do? What we, what we be power? Everybody, everybody grumbling and mumbling about the problem of how the country going, but nobody want to make a match. Start with one and two, and you can add up. Every, the longer we sit back, if the more time he gets to do nonsense to the country, uh, all he concentrating and getting a big race and travel one plane every minute and gone, gone up, up, up there in um, Abu Dhabi, go, go, go cool out. And, and the country down in, in misery. God help this country here and I hope that no more lives get shut down. That's it, let me get somebody a chance. I'll, I'll come back and pick up more time. Thank you so long again. Thank you very much. I want to apologize there for the quality of that call. Seem to have had some uh, difficulty uh, some with our connectivity, I should say. I see what's wrong with that call. But my straight dog family, it's 13 uh, before the 10 o'clock hour. And if you have joined me for the first time, Straight Talk is heard every Monday and Thursday uh, from 8 to 10 in the PM, which tells me we have a few more minutes to uh, connect with you. Uh, we are discussing the sad and tragic events that continue to occur in St. Kitts. A matter of fact, we are discussing the doom and gloom in St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, which includes the 
sad and tra- tragic events in particular over the last three days. We've had three murders in as many days, if my memory serves me right. But this email reads, I would like to know where are the churches? It seems as though the churches are very scared and silent. I think that the churches should meet with the government and hold an open meeting on the television and radio and let us call in and voice our opinions. With the music festival coming up, the outsiders might not want to come to St. Kitts. This is a real scary situation and I think that the music festival 2024 should be cancelled one mother, another. Be careful what you ask for. Read this email. Wow. This other email reads, I think we read this before. Uh, July bought his ex-father-in-law to be in charge of national security. My question, after in office for almost two years, where is the program to put in place to enhance national security? What has been achieved other than him receiving a salary? Have help, help him please help us. Let's go back to the lines. I'll call you live. El caller? Are they caller? Good evening, Patrick. Uh, good evening, my dear. Seems to be having a little difficulty with this phone. How are you? I am peaceful. Yourself? I'm fine. I'm fine. What are calling to say? I would really like to know what them people they were saying got me to go around this country. What are they taking me away for? Because they ain't doing no work. What they gonna do is for? Patches, let me tell you something about this country. I do not know which part we're going. We know they're going up, down, cross, now nowhere. This agriculture, you hear them talk about 20, 25, 25, 25? What are they going to do 20, 25 years? Well, now we're telling the people then that they must, they must plant and if they can't get the things themselves, Bring them up the agriculture, the end of sell them for them. And when the people them turn to go go get them money, they ain't getting no money because they think them up, they spoil and they have to spoil them well. Nothing at all. They're getting selling. And they must tell people about 2025. Which one the 2025 are them speaking about? Eh? They're telling the people that they must bring the things them up at the culture and they send them for them. And when all of six and five weeks, the people can't get them money, then the people them go, go ask them, before they not just call them and send them to show them away. And that is bad. Huh? And they're going out like one of the things that go on in this place here. Patrice, you want, you want you to check for me again too? That boat where you put put up down there, when people go in and they wish they go in, they go sit down and watch that. I made to understand that all the pictures in India come down, and only King Lawyer picture one in the hall of it. So please to check it out for me, to see if it is true. I made to understand that. All of them gone, and you do not know what they gone for, because when they come back, they ain't telling us nothing. Nothing, they just gone, gone over there, just a walk and watch what people are doing in their country, and with that, they run, come back down there with it, and put it on top of the country without tell anybody anything. That's what they take me away from. Oh my God, I saw it for thinking. I saw it for thinking right now, because it's under, we going, under. Going. But you know, a pleasant night, you hear me? Have, have a pleasant night as well, my dear. Yes, that's what we are talking about tonight. The doom and gloom. Mr. McMahon reads this email. 
I don't think that I am qualified enough to tell you what to say. Because you're more than qualified to defend yourself with any proposition on these calling programs. Yesterday on the issues, you made a valid point that all parties should come together and have a discussion on the rising plaguing crime issue in the country. Before you had completed your statement, the host interjected and said to you, do you believe if you invite Timothy to a meeting to discuss the matter of crime, you think he would come? Of course he would come and said you. But MacMahon, what you should have done is to return the question to him in this manner and ask him, do you think that Dr. Drew would have the heart to invite Harris to a meeting to discuss the matter of crime when he has publicly said that he will never, never sit in any meeting with Timothy Harris to discuss anything with regard to St. Kitts and Nevis? That was the biggest and most stupid statement Jew has ever made thus far in his political life. Yes, MacMahon, I agree with you that Harris would have no other alternative but to attend because Harris is a man with integrity and as he always declared how much he loved St. Kitts and Nevis. He not only but has, he not only but has demonstrated his love in numerous ways. You're not serious about the crime in the Federation. Why the Premier of Nevis and not the Prime Minister had to speak out on the shooting deaths in St. Kitts. But today, after the murder rate increased exponentially, he made a statement from his pleasurable trip, which is neither here nor there. The country is in crisis, and the Prime Minister and his deputy are out on their joyride. These people don't know what they are doing. Lord, help us. Read this email. Take these other emails, because a lot have just come in belatedly. Mr. Glassford, good night. As I listen to your program, I said I would like to write to get you to give me an idea what I can do, because this is rather serious. I had a case in the law court some five years ago when I took a young man to court for some money owed to me. I went to the court to have the case heard and the defendant refused to come to the court to hear the case. And I won the case and the man was told to pay me with interest and to date I have not heard anything. I went back to the court to have the case heard again. And I won the case again, and the bailiff has been doing nothing. Could you tell me what is going on at the court? An upset listener reads this email. Good night. It is sad to see that, cr that crime scene. Our officers need to be properly trained in securing the crime area and don't have people walking around the body also, the body should have been covered with a sheet. I thought I was looking at Haiti. Sad reads this email. Patches, what is going on at the post office? Have you heard that the postmaster general has resigned and he has been replaced by one of the post office staff who was transferred to the water department? Patches, what has happened to the two peers? health and national security. Two females, and they are supposed to be supporters of the Labour Party. Give us some information, please. Read this email. Uh, this other email reads, They couldn't do what Tim did during the COVID. My fellow Kittitians, Jude does not care about us. If he had cared for us, he would have done something long time about the crime. Tim did something, but do not. These labor people are opening our eyes as to how they are clueless. 
They run in the government. The run in the government didn't even take the time to build a strategy. All now in two years, no strategy. Tim did something to save the young men or the young men's lives in St. Kitts. That should read. Tim did what I took to keep the guys alive. What it took to keep the guys alive. But look at the Labour Party. Their belly and pockets full. Remember the man said if he and he said if he got some money, Senkis go run red. Tell Drew, who said that an election can be bought, that the man said he wants his money. Reads this email. This other email reads, I said that Monday, when push comes to shove, not even the ministers could live in St. Kitts. They will have to run, they and their entire family. But we will be up the airport waiting for them because they have us in a mess. Drew is running from his responsibilities as a prime minister. He can only fire these Labour supporters, but Douglas on his tail. We need to file a motion of no confidence. Somebody tell Douglas to link me. Read this email. Good evening, Ambassador. I don't know how true it is. I'm hearing that a lot of illegal guns come in the country patches. The bad man, them beating the system. The guns directly come through the legal points of entry. Something needs to be done. What immigration and customs doing? What Coast Guard doing. The police them finding illegal guns on the street and in people's house. So how come these same guns can be stopped or can't be stopped at our borders? Read this email. Listen, them overseas voters who came and voted for Labour are to blame also. They are not innocent. They knew what Labour means and they came, voted and went back where they came from. They can run from St. Kitts, but what about those who can? Who can't? While saying that, please play on Toro Stories by Buju Banton if you can read this email. Patches, do we have a serious police force or one where every officer is doing their own thing? It looks. At the, I look at the crime scene at John Street this afternoon and people just walking up and down the street contaminating the scene. And all the police could do, stand there with their guns. I did not see one senior officer in khaki to take charge of the crime scene and giving direction. It is very shameful for what I observe with this email. As we wind down, I'll try to finish my email as my straight talk family. Good night, Patches. I beg to defer with you, Dr. Drew gets his camel milk directly from the camel nipples. <laughs> Read this email. Uh, Patches, it's time all the people of this country realize that this Labour government has failed us all. Those Labour supporters who keep saying that the government is doing good should be ashamed of themselves. They must be living on some other planet. They destroyed everything that was working in this country. And now the whole country is in a mess. It's time to get rid of them. They are a bunch of greedy, selfish liars. Read this email. Patches, good night. So I had one. ST had one of the best firearms and tool marks examiner. I guess that means St. Kitts. St. Kitts had one of the best firearms and tool marks examiner and the most experienced and seasoned crime scene investigator. And we lost him to Anguilla for the fail to pay for the expertise because he's a little country boy. Now we have a Trinidadian coming paying big bucks, food, transportation. What we had an all-round with 25 years policing experience. We're losing our gun cases and the shootings happening. The crime scene staff very inexperienced and the director overwhelmed, but the commissioner don't care. Read this email. And this is my final email for the night. Patches, can you tell us when 
Dr. Harris will be on your program. Good question, my straight dog family. And it's time for me to perhaps wrap and I'll perhaps take maybe two more calls if these callers would be guided by brevity. Caller, you are live. Hello, caller. Yes, sir. So. Yes, sir. Um, crime, crime start in Parliament too, you know. Not only shooting is crime alone. Because they're supposed to show any, any, a good example to the public. But the behavior of Congress and the woman in the, the senator, when Dr. Harris gets up to speak, that alone is teaching the youth them to be disobedient to the elders. And the last thing I'm going to say now here, the police and them, the chief of police, he need to speak to the police them. Some of them got a bad way, they go to your house, go look for Marby, they just walk in your door without reading, reading arm. What are you supposed to read before you enter your place? That is wrong and illegal. So you got to talk to them. Let us stop the foolishness. Otherwise, otherwise everybody ain't gonna take it so. All right. See you tonight. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, I uh, apologize here. This the quality of that call. Uh, something seems to have gone wrong with my lines. But we'll wrap tonight's programming, my street dog family. And for those who would have joined me late. We looked at our thesis tonight, which I titled Doom and Gloom in St. Kitts Nevis. Convict selling passports. We looked at the CBI. We looked at the the uh, Crime, and perhaps I'll take this and make this my final call for the night. Call you live. Hello, caller. Good evening. Good evening. I come in on the last shipment. Yes. How are you, sir? I am peaceful, sir. Yourself? Not bad at all. I just so thought with this crime thing. In we, we've heard before about the um, what you call it. Payment for peace, I can't remember the name of it now. Peace. In the past, there was a lot of amount of money and he criticized the millions of dollars that we spent to reduce the crime rate. Um, I don't know what he's doing with that, that savings now that he claimed to be saving. Mm. But instead of giving the ministers and themselves this bomb and coup, bomb and coup increase in salary that they gave themselves recently, if they took some of that and invested it in the police, because I think, I believe our police force face with the crime situation is not just saying give the Lord, it's the whole Caribbean. So we've got to accept that if the other island's full of crime, we're going to be full of crime too. But, um, so we need a more vibrant police force, a larger police force. So that is going to cost the country money. So give the police, attract more police by give, by increasing the police salaries as against ministerial salaries. Because the police are more important at this stage than the ministers. So we want plenty police. So man, police are supposed to be knocking us down. Every street you turn is supposed to see police. And that will help keep down the crime in this country of ours. But we must not be spending money on ourselves, spend it on the security of the country and the safety of the people. And one way of doing it is increasing the number of police and by attracting increased police att- um, applications by I- increasing the, 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 the salaries of the police. Make the police salaries look so good that everybody wants to be police. Mm-hmm. And in that way, we will have, yeah, we'll have, we'll have less crime in St. Kitts and Davis. Have a good night, my boy. Have a good night as well. And that's a plug for the police. That's a perspective uh, we have not heard, but a very good perspective. Uh, We must uh, expend some more on the the police. We expend some more on the police, uh, my straight talk family. And as we wind down tonight's programming, 
I'll have I'll take this and make this one my final call for the night. Uh, caller, you are live. Hello, caller. Yes, that is. Yes, I'll make it my final call for the night. Yeah, yeah, this is this, this, this my last call too. That is, let me tell you something, you hear me? There is no way we trying. You see, every minute they have people at prayer, 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 the prayer is not working. The prayer is not working because the election that gone was win and obvious. They had people with world red spray battle going up and down the constituency, I mean, the police station them, and I spray them and what not. So don't care what we do, we ain't gonna get that thing right now, we have to pray and not to do. So I'm sorry to this country here. If you win an election with God is in it, well definitely we prosper, but after Satan is in it, we ain't gonna prosper. We have trouble and we hand. You have a good night. Have a good night as well, my street talk family. And that's the way we're gonna end it in terms of our calls and our emails as well. Uh, but my street talk family, tonight we looked at our thesis, which I titled Doom and Gloom in St. Kitts Nevis Convict Selling Passports. And I made the point that in recent times we have heard our Prime Minister with what I call an idle boast about being number one in CARICOM on the Human Development Index, the HDI, and claimed uh, uh, credit for being number one. But truth be told, that has not resulted in any boom in the country. If it had, then it would have been marked, for example, by significant GDP growth. There would have been increased commercial activity, for example, with either the business sector or the economy as a whole. But these two small Islands in the Caribbean, St. Kitts and Nevis, two islands in one paradise. There is potential for doom, or there is in fact doom and or gloom, in spite of all the numerous accolades we may cite. And if you take a quick glance at our history, it reveal that we were once the mother colony of the West Indies. But that is taking us back centuries ago. Fast track to current times and after 40 years of independence, many will say there's nothing for us as a federation to become excited about. And that's frightening as we live in a world of complexity unpredictability and nerve-wracking or racking uncertainty. Our democracy has obviously failed us since August the 6th of 2022 as the new July administration has introduced a new system of government, hear me, a new system of government by half the population and not the whole. It's been doomed and gloom around the country ever since the Team Unity Administration collapsed. The investors were waiting for a Labour government, we were told. But it seems like they were waiting in vain. Prime Minister July was quick to blame, he was quick to criticize, and equally as quick to punish the poorest people amongst us. The PAP, the Poverty Elevation Program, was decimated. Some almost 5,000 people displaced. He came with a sinful motive to discredit Timothy Harris and some members of his former administration. But he used a sinner to cast the first stone. 
And you know what the Bible said about the casting of the stone. He stopped every shovel-ready project he met. Think of the solar farm. Think of the Basti High School. And this has resulted, no doubt, in the stagnant economy that we have. Many contractors are still out of work. Politics under July overrides almost everything. Look at what's happening with our water. Politics overriding our water. What has happened to our medicinal cannabis industry? What about the money that should be growing on trees, my sweet dog family? And these are the issues. The CBI has a convicted felon as the face of the public benefit option. And that's scandalous, my street dog family. But as we wind down tonight's programming, we ask ourselves what the future holds for us. Or we will, we, will, we will say definitively that what the future holds for all of us is not uncertain. It is not unpredictable or unpredictable. I should say, for as long as we have an administration led by Terence Michael July, whose deputy is a self-confessed slow learner, but they all claim to be experts. But as we go along on our daily chores, our fundamental rights and freedoms are under attack. And we have all lost hope in our elected representatives. But truth be told, who to blame but ourselves? Because we did not ensure that these leaders underwent a rigorous test of leadership quality. My short talk family, in the meantime, sad and tragic events continue to, to occur in our beloved St. Kitts and Nevis. And for, from all indications, things will get worse. Three murders in three days in St. Kitts and Nevis. And that makes 11 murders for the year. And 50 murders in 20 months on the Terence Michael July. But while Senkits is burning and families are hurting, our Prime Minister is on his honeymoon in Dubai and posted an obnoxious message on his Facebook page. I showed you before, my straight dog family, obnoxious, telling us that security matters. Imagine running the country on social media from his iPhone 15 Plus. Yes, running the country from his smartphone. Remember one leader said he can run his country with his Blackberry? And Drew is running the country from his iPhone. The Blackberry days are over. My straight dog family, the Federation is collapsing. St. Kitts Nevis is on fire. And I warn you that the content of this video is graphic. But I must leave you with it tonight, my street dog family. It's a long time ago, we used to have police patrol in the world. The police patrol in the world now. Yeah, I mean, then coming around in the Jeep and I came, picking on the wrong for people. I mean, people talk like they want to bang them up and all that thing there. But me can't give me a talk like I'm not playing nobody. You know, hey, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play one Bodies or a body riddled with bullets lying at John Street, my street dog family. 
And as we wind down again, my sweet dog family, we have a leader who is incompetent. We are at an intersection that requires a GPS, economic, social, technological GPS to maneuver around this quagmire that we have found ourselves in. We are at a juncture that requires a GPS to maneuver around this doom and gloom in St. Kitts and Nevis. The convict selling our passports. That's my story tonight, my sweet dog family, and I am not going to change it. I want to thank Almighty God nonetheless for guiding our conversation tonight as always. I want to thank all those who listened. I want to thank those who sent emails, those who called. And I want to remind you that all of you are the ones who make straight talk. And for that, I say a big, big thank you. I am Ian Patches Lyburn. And God's willing, I will leave you with this email as well. The statement made by the Prime Minister today from Dubai on the crime situation has not impacted us. It sounds very dumb and stupid. Dr. Jew, lie if you have nothing sensible to say. Just hush your mouth, I beg you. But that's the way we're going to end it, my Shootalk family. I thank Almighty God one more time. Thank all of you and remind you that you are the ones who make straight talk. So have yourself a wonderful weekend until we connect on Monday for another edition. Remember that whatever your mind conceived, that you will achieve. But first of all, you've got to believe. So when you wake in the morning, thank God for the morning light. Thank Him for taking you through the night. And my sweet dog family, keep moving on. Bye-bye. Until we connect on Monday.